Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chelsea and I'm currently backpacking around Central America solo. And welcome to part two of my Omotepe vlogs. In this vlog, I'm going to be doing the chocolate tour at the El Patal Chocolate Paradise Hostel in Omotepe. And then I'm gonna be heading over to the beach for the beautiful Omotepe sunset. Good morning, it's actually a bit cooler today and quite cloudy. Um, I am just about to have my breakfast. I ordered the blueberry pancakes. Um, I don't think I'm a fan of the food here, like I can already tell that I don't love it. Um, they've got like almond bits on them which wasn't on the menu, I would have asked for it without that. But there's like four little weird blueberries, like coconut yogurt. I'm sure once I've scraped everything off and put the maple syrup on they'll be fine. But, um, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this hostel, like everyone's raved about it so much and I like don't love it. Um, there are so many flies everywhere, like the toilets are compost toilets, like there are normal ones as well which is fine but like they're not clean. Um, yeah, I don't understand why people rave about this place so much, I actually prefer other ones, like the cheaper ones. Um, but I mean like all of the hostels on Amitabi were like similar prices, like it wasn't actually that much more expensive to stay here, so I'm not like that mad about it, but like the food is expensive. Um, but yeah, anyway, today um, I'm going on the chocolate tour, so <clears throat> I'm hoping that I'll like that and meet some people there. Um, I did talk to some people last night, um, but yeah, maybe I'll make some friends. Also the people that I met from the bus, uh, they're now on Omotepe as well, so I might meet up with them later as well. Um, Helen and Julius, if I said their names before, that's their name. Chocolate tour is planned for today and then the afternoon I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. I'm not going to do the volcano tour at all. Um, speaking of the volcano, I can't even see it, it's so cloudy. Anyway, I'm going to eat my pancakes and hopefully enjoy them. <laughs> That's it, that's it! Yay! Oh, he's eating them! Cute! <laughs> oh, he's really into- Oh, that was a big mouthful! Oh, he's made a right old mess! Look, I don't know if you can see it on the table. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Lucy and I'm coming from the Czech Republic and um, my relationship to cacao is very near. I love cacao, cocoa beans and to it with dried chilies to make it spicy and once it was spiced they would add they would then take two cups and they would pour the cacao back and forth back and forth until it became very foamy frothy and bubbly on top and this foam was the most desirable part of this drink and this so imagine if you were a good barista 500 years ago it would be how well could you make this beverage which they described as a thick spicy frothy bitter beverage and this drink of theirs they called chocolate and this is where we get the word chocolate from reminding you that it was the Mayans that gave us the word cacao which means food of the gods another story that you'll hear about the origin of the word chocolate the Mayans had a word chocolate which was the verb to drink cacao so it could come from one of like two or three references we're not really sure but this was the drink that they had they took out the chili and I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret, unless you knew this already, if you work with chocolate, maybe you do. If you wanna make a bar of chocolate or an edible piece, you can never add liquids to it. Not water, not milk, it causes chocolate to seize up, and if you were to add fresh milk to it, the milk's gonna spoil. 
So it took Nestle making powdered milk and trying to sell this when he finally found a guy in his village called Daniel Peters, who was a chocolate maker. And the two of them came together bringing chocolate making skills and powdered milk. And voila, milk chocolate was born. Nestle took this idea from Daniel Peters actually and went on to form the Nestle Company, which today is the largest food corporation in the world. Important to note that where they got their start was making milk chocolate. And what Nestle wanted to do was to globalize cacao and chocolate. But the problem here was cacao was expensive and all of it was coming from Central America, South America, and the Caribbean islands. So what Nestle decided to do is get together with some of the early families like Lint and Cadbury's and there was a French family as well involved and they decided to go down to Africa to plant more of the trees. Why Africa? Well, slavery is still going on and colonialization and it's a closer supply to Europe. So this would drive down the price of cacao and make it cheap. And that is exactly what happened. Because you see today, the top five largest producing countries of cacao in the entire world. At number one, we have the Ivory Coast, and they grow 42% of the world's supply of cacao. Number two in the world is Ghana, and they grow another 20%. So just there, two countries grow over 60%, almost two thirds of all of it. Third in the world today is Ecuador at around 10%, and four and five were back in Africa with Nigeria and Cameroon. Actually, they're called Sayolis here. But Sayolis is the family of flies that come and pollinate cacao. And once the pollination occurs, the fruits begin to grow. You see this little one? Mm -hmm. 10 fruits on the tree, but you could only take one or two at a time because if it's ripening on the tree, you have to take it in that moment. The window is about one to two weeks. If you don't get it in this time, you lose it. So with a knife or a machete, you'll go and you'll take down that one fruit. Then eight to 10 days later, you'll circle back around and you'll take another one to two. And eight to 10 days later, maybe 15 days later, you'll circle back and take another one to two. And that is how cacao is harvested throughout the year. It's done with uh, by a person, not by robots or machines, somebody who knows their farm very well. Um, and you have to see the fruits in the trees as they ripen and you have to know it really well. Like, once you do take it off the tree, and I'm gonna open these up, but if they're probably over ripen, if they're really over ripen, I'll maybe run back and grab a knife so I can cut one of these down. Um, because three to seven days off the tree, the fruit will over ripen quite fast. That explains why you don't see this fruit sold in grocery stores or supermarkets, um, especially in countries that don't grow it. It's not gonna be there. And even around Central America where this does grow, when you pass your typical fruit and veggie stand, this is not a common fruit they sell there because it over ripens so quickly, this fruit rarely leaves the farm itself. And um, so you have to use it right away. Once you pick it off the tree, the best day is the same day you pick it off the tree, but you have a window of three days otherwise to still use it. Otherwise it goes completely off and you can't even make chocolate out of it. So I'm gonna open up this fruit. How many of you guys have never tried cacao before? Got a couple of people, awesome. Yeah. Will you never forget your first time? <laughs> So this one is still good to eat. Uh, there's about 40 to 60 beans covered in a white flesh. Um, this is cacao, the food of the gods. The fruit itself has a nice sour and uh, sweet flavor to it. The bean, it's with the white stuff, by the way, that you make wine from. Wow. Can you the, the whole thing? The be yeah, the whole thing. It's bitter on the inside and it's purple on the inside as well. Mm. Wow. It's not yeah. chocolate colored and it doesn't taste anything like chocolate. And so why is it purple? Mm -hmm. It's because nature informs us that the color purple is a sign. You can have as much of these as you want, by the way. Mm. You can eat wow. the whole fruit stuff left. Mm. Okay. It's like lychee. Yeah. Like lychee? Lychee, lychee. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, lychee, mm -hmm. sometimes passion fruit, pineapple, has a lot of different. Now, antioxidants are things that help heal our immune system and give us uh, recovery. So that's a good thing to have. And this is one of the highest in the world of antioxidants. Now I'll give you some comparisons. When we think of antioxidants, sometimes we think about blueberry. Antioxidants are rated on something called the ORAC scale. So they're given units of measurement. Grapes have 800 antioxidant units inside. Raw blueberries have between 2000 to 2500 antioxidant units inside. Cacao on the other hand has between 95,000 and over 100,000 antioxidant units inside. That makes this fruit 50 times more antioxidants than blueberries, 30 times more than green tea, and 20 times more than acai yeah. and goji berries. It <laughs> is truly one of the highest in the world of this. If you eat just two or three of these raw beans, you've already gotten 100% of your antioxidants for the day. In addition, 
I have the question, yeah. please. Sorry for that. No. Um, uh, just in the antioxidants stay there even so uh, even so when you are roast when you are drying it and roasting it so what i'm just talking oh, about now is uh -huh. specifically the health benefits of this fruit okay this fruit is absolutely the healthiest way of consuming cacao which makes a lot of sense because fruits are really healthy when you roast this or process this further you do reduce some of these antioxidants depending on how far how much you process it between 10 to 20 percent which definitely doesn't make it a junk food what turns can't chocolate into a candy bar or a junk food, I'll talk about when we get into the factory. But right now I'm talking about the health benefits of this fruit itself. Mm -hmm. If you can't get access to this fruit, then the next best thing is the beans, nibs, and then dark chocolate. Wow. So in addition to the antioxidant content, this is also the highest source of magnesium in the entire world. <coughs> By weight, nothing even comes really close. And it's also the highest plant-based source of iron in the entire world. And a good comparison for this is that 100 grams of cacao has approximately five and a half times as much iron as 100 grams of beef has. Wow. So this is the highest plant-based source of iron in the world. This also has a lot of calcium, more than cow's milk. It's got lots of potassium, zinc, manganese, and chromium as well. It's a superfood, truly. And the top two of these minerals in form of something really interesting. The magnesium and the iron. Yeah, you had a question? Yeah, I was just gonna ask, do all of those like vitamins and minerals like stay when it's in the bean form? Mostly, unless you further process it. Okay. There are ways to make sure that you don't receive it and there are ways to make sure you do receive it. So it's it. just like the antioxidants that you lose? Also, no, some of the vitamins and uh, minerals as well. Bit. You can you can either lose them or not absorb them, depending on what you add to it. Okay. I'll get to that in the chocolate factory. This explains why people get cravings for chocolate, but it more so explains why women crave chocolate more often than men do. How our bodies work is if we're missing certain nutrients, our body's gonna send a signal to our brain to think about it. So if you're missing iron or magnesium, you're going to think about chocolate. Women generally need more iron in their diet than men do, and that is why women crave chocolate more often. Yeah. Now, it also balances our mood, it makes us feel good, so right before your moon cycle, right before you're about to bleed, you might get this craving for chocolate because your body's alerting yourself, I'm gonna need more iron. And then during and after, you also might get cravings for chocolate for the same, for similar or same reasons as well as for how it makes us feel. So that's the, that's the point. If you crave chocolate, you should definitely eat chocolate. Your body's telling you something and you should listen to it. But the 30% with sugar and milk, not gonna do anything for you because that's mm -hmm. mostly sugar and milk. So the darker the better, but the healthiest being this fruit. Not easy to get in Europe. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. no, no, no. But dark chocolate is. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. And that's, you know, 70% 70, 70 and okay. up, I think is great. Yeah, I think one chocolate daily is good. <laughs> Very bitter one. Um, the next thing we're gonna go see is fermentation, um, which is the process after you pick this fruit from the tree. But before I move on, any other questions about the fruits or the trees? You use this shell. And it has a very oh. strong and pungent aroma. Yeah. It smells mm -hmm. alcoholic and it's very hot. If you touch this, oh. if you want to, it's oh, yeah. very hot. We can touch it. If you want to. You see that heat? Okay, we're we'll yeah. here. Yeah, there's a, a pump to wash your hands there. <laughs> anyway, this gets like roasted. Huh? It's hot, right? Yeah. Like it's over oh, 40 what? degrees hot. No, oh, oh, that's really red. red. Don't don't eat it. Oh, okay. It's alcoholic. It <laughs> now, what is so, sour? Yeah. Let me show you what's going on in this process. For you guys that can't see. So fermentation is what's developing the flavor of the cacao. It's developing from bitter notes, which the purple seed on the inside is bitter, towards sour notes, uh, which happens as you ferment it. But we don't really associate dark chocolate to be sour as much as we associate it with the bitterness. This fruit has been opened. The white beans with the flesh and everything gets taken out and they get put into a box. They get covered in banana leaves. What happens in this moment, it's actually happening right now. We can't even see it. But a type of fungus, an aerobic yeast, is flying around the air and flying around there. And it's going to find its way to the sugar of this fruit. And it's going to split the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. That's why it smells alcoholic. That's why you can make a wine from this. And also that's why it gets hot in the box. Once this occurs, then a lactic acid bacteria shows up and it eats away the rest of the white flesh. So it looks like it's sweating off the white flesh. And as it's doing that, it's pulling the sour notes from the pulp, those lychee flavors into the bean itself. So it's becoming less bitter, more sour. And so how we do this is we mix this up every single day. Chocolate. 
So that actually happens after the sacks, but also while you're here mixing it, it's always good to do a bit of pre-sorting to take out anything that's not gonna make it into the end result. Any other questions about this? Um, are there any animals that will come here because it's yeah. open? No, no. It's uh, too bitter for them in this state. The it's fruit, too bitter. Yes. 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 Is absolutely an artist. Mm -hmm. um, we got ourselves one of these, which spins around and crushes the beans. together. Now what you would have to do is take out all the shells. And that would be a whole lot of work if you had to do it by hand, mm -hmm. which thankfully we don't, because we built ourselves a winnowing machine, which uses the wind. Mm -hmm. And the wind, because the shells and the nibs have different densities, the wind carries the shells in one direction, the nibs go in another direction. Now, how do these large corporations do it? Well, they also buy a winnowing machine, except these machines usually start at over $100,000. We figured out that with some PVC pipe and a shop vac that we can build our own. So mm -hmm. Ramon here is gonna demonstrate how this works. Center, you pour the shelves in here, and then the shelves go out one end into the big red bucket behind, and the nibs are heavier and they drop down below. taking out most of the shells. Now there's still a few shells left over, but they're bigger, they're easier to see. So the last bit we do actually take out by hand, um, but it's just a lot less work. Talk about the harvesting of the fruits themselves. We got to try a cacao fruit off the tree. We got to see fermentation live in action, then sun drying. Then it got roasted, peeled, and grinded with Ramon, and now we're coming here. This is also made of stone, so what happens when you crush stone on stone is it turns and breaks the fibers down, and it becomes a liquid. So it turns it from cacao nibs into cacao liquor, which then re-solidifies as cacao paste, which is what this is. And then it's from this that you can make chocolate. That's the base of anything. Put sesame into a stone grinder and it becomes tahini. It's organic, locally grown sesame on the island. Uh, that's why we make our own tahini here. But the same idea with peanut butter and with cacao. So with the big machine, um, we have cacao. Finally make chocolate out of it. But before I go on even further, I also want to stay in between these two. It looks something like this. And that's what cacao butter is. Oh, yeah. And if you were to take cacao butter, this is the fat from the beet. If you were to take this and add sugar and milk to it, that would be what white chocolate is. Yeah. Now when you take out the fiber, you're also taking out the antioxidants, you're taking out the minerals, you're taking out the theobromine, the anandamide, all of that is in the fiber. As a result, white chocolate is always gonna be the least healthiest form of chocolate, which is not me judging anybody who likes chocolate, they actually <laughs> understand why, fat, sugar, and dairy. That's what it is, and it lights our brain up like a Christmas tree and they're highly addicting substances. Mm -hmm. It's literally one of the most popular chocolates for a very good reason, because it's one of the most addicting forms of consuming it. Yeah. But objectively, it's the least nutritious. The fruit is the healthiest, and this would be the least healthiest. Yes. Does the butter have like any nutritional benefit? Great question. I didn't want to insult it by calling it just the fat. <laughs> Um, it's a very special fat. Most, it contains three different types of acids. One of them, the main one is called oleic acid, which is a similar fat you find in coconuts, avocados, and olive oil. It's very different fat than you would find inside of palm oil or yeah. vegetable or soy, for example, yeah. which is why it is still being used in many things. You can cook with it. You can add it into chocolate and add more fat to it and make it creamier and silkier. You can also make it taste more like dairy without actually adding any dairy to it. Um, so there's many ways you can use it. Like once every two weeks, we make another batch of cacao butter because we'll add it into like our vegan cheesecakes, for example. Cacao butter and cashews together is like, there are six of them. And these six crystals are stored in the fat of cacao. And the fat, Fun fact, vegan milk chocolate is better for you than milk chocolate because there's something in milk that like inhibits your body from absorbing the nutrients from milk chocolate, but plant-based milk does not do that. 4%, um, less than a beer. 
But there's food. What else? Cheese and thank you. How do you say in uh, Czech? You say this in Czech, right? No, it's Delicious. Wow. It's a little, like, a little bit like kombucha. But it's slightly more alcoholic than kombucha. Very nice. Wow. You can understand why people would drink this for 7,000 years. <laughs> So this drink is 100% wow. made from it take cacao like a and all the ducks under the table. Um, and it's, I think he said 3 to 4% alcoholic. It's, it's not a marketable product. It goes off in less than two weeks and becomes vinegar. Uh, this is why you've never heard about it and why you've never tried it before. Like the smell you can't of the actually try this unless you live on a cacao farm. You don't have to make every moment in your life a ritual or a ceremony, but you can make any moment in your life a ritual or a ceremony, and that includes drinking cacao. And you might have heard before that water can hold memory. Well, so can cacao. And cacao is a water spirit, so when you combine the two together, like is inside this drink, you generally feel the effects of the cacao more intensely when you drink it versus when you eat it. Scientists really don't understand why, but I think this is the key to it. But how this works is that because it can hold memory in the crystals, when you, if you set an intention into your drink, whatever you put inside is what you're going to get out of it. So you don't have to do anything. I'm, this is your ritual, but I encourage each one of you guys to take a moment with your drink before you, before you drink it and say something or think something. You don't have to even say it out loud. But put, if you put an intention into that drink, smell it and sip it, whatever you put in is going to go directly to your heart. And this is how it works. So if you want to do this, feel free to. If, if not, that's okay as well. First one is four ingredient chocolate, which means it's cacao, sugar cane, vanilla bean, and a pinch of sea salt. Historical footnote, any of you guys know why chocolate and vanilla pair so well together? It's a pretty obvious answer actually. Vanilla bean was domesticated in Central America, specifically in Mexico next to cacao. So the two of them have always been together, growing together, and vanilla didn't go anywhere else in the world until 450 years ago, just like cacao didn't go anywhere else in the world until 450 years ago. So that's why they pair really well together. All of our vanilla comes from here. So um, the classic, uh, I'm gonna let pass a piece around, take a piece you want, smell it first. Some of these might have started to melt because it's <laughs> under the sun. Um, that's why I took it out of the Smell it first. No, 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 this one. We're gonna do this all together. And all chocolates, by the way, have a rising intensity to them. So the moment you put it on your tongue, you might not taste much. Let it sit there for a while, and you'll notice its flavors opening up probably about now. What are you guys tasting? Again, no wrong answers. Somebody tasting anything earthy or something fruity? The next chocolate to try, this one has peanut oil in it. So notice what you're tasting. Notice how it's different than the first one. There's no wrong answers. More fruity? Yeah, it's only more fruity. Wow. Wow. Yeah. like uh, four, four o'clock now maybe potentially, I don't know, ooh nearly five, um, nearly five now, um, after the chocolate tour I've literally just been like sat chilling in the hostel, um, making friends with people, um, it's been really nice actually just to sit and chill, um, had some lunch and then Helen and Julius came uh, to the hostel and we're going to go to the mango mango beach or something to watch the sunset um they have a scooter that they've hired for the day um i do not own such said scooter <laughs> um i don't have a scooter so i 
I'm either gonna get a tuk-tuk if I can see one or try hitchhiking I actually really want to try hitchhiking um, or if not then one of them is gonna come back and collect me um, yeah Ugh, let me fill up my water quickly there are so many flies okay they've gone like <laughs> Sometimes I don't even want to talk because there's just so many flies around. Um, sorry, I feel like I can... I don't know. Um, anyway, I just saw some monkeys in the trees. Um, I don't have... Obviously, every time that I see wildlife in the trees, I don't have my Canon camera, so I can't zoom in. Um, but I tried to get a video on my phone. Um, <laughs> But I was just randomly walking, dropped my key in the bush. Uh, luckily someone spotted it because I didn't hear it fall at all. Uh, so luckily someone noticed it, but yeah. Just walking up the hill to leave the hostel. Um, it's a very steep hill. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to try and either hitchhike at the top or find a tuk-tuk or message Julius and Helen to see yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get to Mango Beach. Hopefully I get there before the sun sets, but I think we've still got like a good hour before it sets. Guys, I just had my first ever hitchhiking experience. That was fun. Um, I, I saw a couple of people pass me, um, but they looked very like... I don't know, not scary, but like they had like a motorbike helmet on and I was like, oh, I don't really want to get on like the back of a bike that I need a motorbike helmet, like if they're going to be going that fast. Um, and uh, I then saw some cars and I was like, okay, I don't know who's in the cars. Like, is it a big group of people or like uh, tourists? And I like panicked and I didn't wave at them. And then I saw like a lady on a scooter and I was like, okay, she looks nice. Uh, she also wasn't wearing a helmet. So I was like, okay, she can't be driving that quickly. <laughs> So I like put my hand up and she stopped and she was like, where are you going? Um, and I pointed at it on the map and she was like, yeah, I'm going there, but like a little bit further. So it worked out perfectly. Um, and she was from uh, Mexico City. Um, so we had a whole little conversation in Spanish on the way here. So not only is it my first experience hitchhiking, uh, but I also got to practice my Spanish as well, which was nice. Um, so yeah, I think I'm walking up to Playa Mango now. I wasn't able to message uh, Julius and Helen. Um, like, I don't really have signal on this island. I don't know if it's my SIM card or if it's just the island. But, oh, that was fun. I'm so proud of myself and finally hitchhiked. Um, and on a bike as well. But yeah, that was fun. And I didn't pay a penny to get here. That's so nice. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try hitchhiking more but yeah I think I liked the fact that I could see who it was on the scooter as well like before waving them because I always have had that like fear with hitchhiking like oh yeah but like you don't know who's in the car who's gonna stop and pick you up um but like obviously on the scooter I could see that it was like a woman and I feel more comfortable uh getting on a bike or in a car with a woman um and yeah she looked nice so <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Now I've got to find, find the other two. <laughs> okay, that was a quick stop. <laughs> um, I'm currently leaving Playa Mangoes. Um, it seems actually quite nice there, but um, uh, I managed to get Wi-Fi so I could message Helen and Julius. Um, and Helen said that they went to a place called Playa Peru uh, something, something, something. <laughs> Playa Peru Kayak Kencho. Um, yeah, anyway, so now I'm walking over there. It's like a 10 minute walk. Uh, it's kind of annoying because <laughs> I wish I had uh, data on the drive here because um, the girl whose scooter I got onto, she was going there. So not only am I now having to walk to the place where she was going anyway um, but also I might see her again and I don't know if she'll think I'm following her and it'd be really awkward I don't know but uh I don't know hopefully not I'll just be like oh my friends changed their decision <laughs> I don't know but um obviously I had to walk all the way down here to get a wi-fi so uh, yeah it's only like a 10 minute walk though so not too bad hopefully I don't miss the sunset I mean I've got plenty of time like the sun's still fairly high so I should make it just in time, which is good. Oh, I just stuck my 
potato! Oh, there's a rock there. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sunset went so quickly. Like, I got here just in time and then, like, the sun disappeared. Um, oh, I just stubbed my toe on a rock. That really hurt. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe the sunset's gone already. It's beautiful though. We saw fireflies in New York? Yes, in yes. Central Park and then we were going through because it just had a whole... In Germany? Yes. Really? They are really awesome. Really? Yeah, that's I've never seen a firefly in the UK. Probably they exited with the Brexit as well. <laughs> <laughs> some fireflies which is really cool um, on the drive back so uh, we actually decided to try and squeeze all three of us on the bike um, and yeah so me, Julius and Helena and actually a word they dropped me back off at my hostel which is really nice of them um, and on the way back we saw the biggest spider that I think I've ever seen like I mean I've seen some big spiders like tarantulas and stuff but like this one was like looked like a huntsman in Australia but like I didn't think that they existed in this part of the world I didn't know that spiders got that big over here um yeah it was just like crossing the road just chilling um yeah didn't expect to see a spider so big um but yeah no it's um it's been cool I got really excited by the fireflies because I'd seen them in Florida once before um but like they were like far away and quite small so it was really cool to see them like right next to me um but yeah, I've just come back to my hostel now and I've just got some wedges. I'm still kind of full from my lunch, um, so I'm not that hungry. So yeah, I've just got the potato wedges. Um, they come with like a cheese sauce. It's like a vegan cheese, which is great to find in a country over here. Hmm. Honestly, I probably prefer them just on their own, but I mean, I'd prefer ketchup, but this place doesn't do ketchup. Um, yeah. Not bad, actually. Better than I thought. And I said, more, I like it more than I thought I would, basically. Yeah, I might ask for some salt so that I can just have them plain. <laughs> so that's the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos. And I will see you in my next video, which is going to be exploring Ometepe by Scooter. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!